remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal and a deluding evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth, but we were in a realm of death and madness. blackened arcades of antiquity until consciousness failed me you remember our venerable house opulent and imperial it is a festering abomination I beg you return home claim your birthright and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. Oh ho 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 ho! Who is ready for some darkest dungeon, my friends? As you can see, I have got my uh, file already. Now, you're probably wondering, it's like... Well, hold on, let me back up. I'm like two different trains of thought right now. I decided to go through a run through of the Darkest Dungeon, quite simply because the uh, the Kickstarter just ended, and I am a year out from getting all the goodies that I had backed from said Kickstarter, and that makes me really, 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 really want to play Darkest Dungeon. As you can see, I actually got a little bit farther. Uh, I had a combat right here, but unfortunately, the recording was. Well, let's face it, it was kind of garbage because things were just there is much to be found in forgotten places. slid off to the side. And I don't like that. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. So, what is Darkest Dungeon? Darkest Dungeon is a roguelike dungeon crawler where instead of like you've seen on uh, my other games that I play, uh, Slay the Spire and Monster Train, um, you don't build a deck. You have your characters. You have their equipment, which you can upgrade, and then they have two trinket slots where you could put various trinkets that could buff or modify abilities. Right here you see Reynald and Dismas, the uh, the Highwayman. These are two classes, because you got the Highwayman and Reynald is a uh, Crusader. Oh, he resists the bleed. That's so rude. Nope, you get stabbed. But basically, Darkest Dungeon is, um, oh, wow, really? How do I get, I'm just gonna have to chop through the corpse, apparently, okay. Darkest Dungeon has a lot of, uh, well, sorry, um, is inspired by a lot of H.P. Lovecraft's, uh, uh, stories and mythos based around all of H.P. Lovecraft's, uh, stories 
And now I know people will say, oh, but H.P. Lovecraft is racist. On one hand, yes. But on the other hand, he was kind of hateful of just his general surrounding because he was a very sickly person and he dealt with a lot of mental issues that quite honestly weren't even thought of to be a pro to be a thing um ba all the way back in the day um i'm saying um way too much but yeah no it's i love uh darkest dungeon because there's so much that you can do in this game, and even though, uh, yeah, you do eventually get to said darkest dungeon, and you do face off against all the creatures that go bump in the night, there's so much story, there's so much lore behind everything, and all the art, as you can see, well, of course you can see the art, um, <laughs> excuse me, sorry, all the art in this game, from what I've been told, has been hand-drawn. There's nothing computer graphics generated or anything. So all their, their striking poses when they hit or when they crit or when they cast a spell or something, that's all done by an amazing art team. And it just gives that grim, dark feeling that they were they were aiming for. All right, and as you can see, it has week one, ruins have been unlocked, I got Reynald and Dismas, they got me to the Hamlet. Technically, I am not a character in the game, but I am the controller. I guide them as to where to go and what to do, and as you can see, I got a bunch of little things. Stagecoach has the new heroes that I don't actually pay gold to hire. Graveyard, where we have a lot of dead people, but thankfully we have nothing here. My first run... My first run, this was stacked full of way too many dead people. Let's try and uh, not do that. I think that's a great idea. This is basically the, uh... <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, that is a third time. That is not great. Alright, so basically it has uh, checkpoints, as you can see. Um, these are... I'm saying, um, like a billion times. These are basically just different levels of the bosses. And... Yeah, each one has uh, their own abilities throughout the three different versions. There's the Crimson Court that has its own creepy vibe. Um, it's based around, like, bugs. Like, vampiric bugs that that act like they are normal human beings. It's it's interesting because you, could, you see the uh, the Countess right here. But you can see something just barely underneath her fan. And she's just like the other ones. And quite honestly, we aren't going to hit those up just yet. But in the future, we're going to crack open the Crimson Court and just punch some vampire mosquitoes. This is the Color of Madness. The Color of Madness is another DLC, which is pretty much like an endless wave after wave after wave of enemies. Uh, you gotta explore the farmstead, defeat the miller, defeat the sleeper. Darkest dungeon. You gotta go through it three times. Or at least that's what it says. The end of the campaign. And there's the collected journals, which is lore that you find in various curios and drops from chests and monsters. All right. 
all the forgotten corners of the earth. Yep, as you can see, these are the trinkets that I was talking about earlier. Unfortunately, there is not much here, but we can upgrade them over time. And then there is the Color of Madness trinkets, which has a lot of nifty stuff, but these crystals can only be gained through going through the Color of Madness uh, stuff. Stagecoach, I want to uh, upgrade. Doing some quick upgrades. Nah, I can't go through there yet. Rarities and curios. Sold at a profit, of course. Alright, so I have nothing else I could really do. Alright. Well, that was the intro. Plus the, well, the first com first couple combats. And, yeah. Uh, to uh, Another reason why I'm actually playing Darkest Dungeon is because Monster Train, as much as I love the game, it has become such a frustrating thing to the point of I didn't want to even turn my computer on at some points when I knew I had to record. It's it's a fantastic game, and it's really fun. It just, every single time I run up against the boss, Arcus, it became such a chore because I had to rework the entire deck around trying to defeat Arcus and utterly failing simply because either A, I didn't have the damage, B, I got messed up because of the shards that he summoned, or C, his minions overwhelmed while I tried to early damage him down. And to have to do all three of those, like watch out for all three of those, while maintaining three levels, got to be a bit much, and after a while I realized that it was no longer fun, and it became a mind-numbing slog through a game that I highly enjoy. So... I'm going to be going through Darkest Dungeon. I'm going to be playing through it. I'm going to try and get everything done. And if I feel confident enough, I'll do a second run through as a deathless run through on Darkest Difficulty, the hardest difficulty. But that'll be down the line. And as you can see, we are in the Hamlet. And I'm Burning Weasel. This is Darkest Dungeon. And if you like what you see, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel. Until next time, Darkest Dungeon will have to wait. And you all have a fantastic night.